As you crawl forward through the tunnel, and the lighter starts to heat up in your fingers, you get the bright idea to try using your cell phone as light source instead. You put your light away, and pull out the phone. Unfortunately, the cell is an older model, and the light of its screen is the same eerie, dim blue glow of a digital watch. Not as much light as your lighter, and much creepier. As you're putting the cell phone away, you jump, startled, as it begins to ring. Your phone's caller ID doesn't seem to recognize the number, but you pick up quickly anyway. It could be your mother calling about your missed lunch date, or maybe James calling to apologize for the poor quality of the previous night. No one answers your greeting immediately. The phone is silent. You repeat yourself, Hello? Hello? And you're almost ready to hang up when a sharp female voice barks back through the phone. Get out! The sudden outburst and hostile tone startled you such that the person is already hung up by the time your mind has processed the message. Was it a wrong number? Cross lines? Or did someone see you trespassing in the hotel? Whatever it was, it's left you pretty shaken. You stop for a moment, trying to regain your composure. You try to convince yourself that the phone call was a mistake of some kind, and there's not a crazy lady calling you. Since you're crawling through a secret tunnel trying to get away from a monster, this is harder than usual. Looking for something to distract yourself, you recall the medicine bottle you picked up in the bathroom. Curious to see what's inside, you put down the phone and pull the bottle out. It's easy enough to open, and inside is... a newspaper clipping? You unroll the newspaper and flick your lighter to life to read it. The cool blue light of the phone just won't do the job for reading. The clipping tells about some guy escaping arrest for assaulting a number of women. How lovely. I wonder why someone saved it. Unfortunately, the words are smudged, or maybe burned in places. You can't make out when or where this happened. Newspapers all look the same. This could have happened yesterday, or ten years ago. So... useful. <laughs> Not. You crawl forward down the tunnel. It seems to just go on and on. As the lighter heats up in your hand, you're afraid to get the cell phone back out. In case it rings again. You might have to, though. If the tunnel goes on much longer, the lighter will burn your fingers. You wonder where this tunnel could possibly lead. Who put it there? And for what purpose? You're switching hands on the lighter when suddenly you realize there's a steadier light up ahead of you. You've almost reached the exit. You crawl forward to the end of the tunnel, enthusiastically, and are startled when your hand meets the air at the end. You pull back quickly. Take more care in examining where you've arrived. No, no, what the hell is going on? First, you're confused, then panicked, and finally, angry. This day is just, just stupid. What the hell is going on? Who wrote all this? Why? Is the person from the phone? Why the hell is the room upside down? You eye the room defiantly. It's a pretty high drop in the room, or so it seems to you, but you refuse to let the room beat you. After all, it's either this or go back and face that thing. Stiffly, you squeeze from a crawl into a sitting position, and with a deep breath, slide off the edge and onto the ceiling uh, floor. That didn't hurt. Too much. You cross the room, a weird sense of vertigo dizzying you. How is everything staying up? Is it both of the ceiling? What about the blankets and stuff? Is it all some kind of an illusion? You bend down and pick the object off the floor, or ceiling. It's a tube of lipstick. Hot pink. Taking the cap off, the stick is flattened. This is absolutely what we use to write all over the walls. After putting the lipstick in your increasingly full coat pocket, you leap up and touch the bedpost. It feels solid. Real. You're almost surprised when gravity doesn't flip-flop you to the floor of the room. But sadly, the room does not seem to operate like a platformer game. You wish you knew who had built a secret upside-down hotel room, and why they had done so. You decide to investigate the room and see what this is all about. You're not sure what you're expecting to find, but you're hoping for something incriminating. A discarded cell phone, perhaps? Well, it looks like the lipstick was the only thing on the floor and ceiling. 
You wish you could just go through the drawers on the ceiling, or floor, but that's sadly not going to happen. You just can't reach. Still, you shuffle through the room looking for anything you might have missed. It's not even a bathroom in this room. Just another wall with more lipstick accusations. You can find no clues as to who made the room or why, except possibly the sole purpose of mocking you. You walk up to the door and find that, luckily, you can reach the knob without a problem. It'll be annoying to have to climb up in order to leave, but you think you can manage. Unfortunately, the door is locked. Oh, God damn it! for real? You are so ready to be done with this lipstick graffiti room that you will get through that door somehow, even if you have to make a bomb out of your cell phone and lighter fluid using a cigarette as a fuse. You decide to save that for plan B, however, and first dig the key the body was holding out of your pocket. You put in the lock and turn it. Miraculously, the door swings open, no need to MacGyver, which well, is almost disappointing. You peer into the hallway, but it's unnaturally dark, considering the upside-down room's light is spilling out into it. You use your lighter for a little extra illumination. However, what it illuminates is not very illuminating. The hallways appears to be warped or reflected in some way. Or else there's a door on the floor right under another door... something? This is too much weird shit for you to take unassisted. You pull out your battered pack of luckies and light one of the remaining ones up. After a good long drag, you feel ready enough to face the freakish facts again. Set about getting out of this room. You begin to hoist yourself up over the threshold. It takes some effort, but you can do it. As you pass between the door and the hallway, your vision suddenly swims with the worst case of vertigo you have ever had. Up and down are meaningless. It's impossible to orient yourself in space. You collapse heavily in the hallway, breathing hard. Finally, your personal gravity seems to reassert itself, and points in space become fixed once again.